Do you think porn is affecting the world in a negative or positive way? Why is it affecting the world anyway? I get asked a lot, like, do I feel porn is addictive? I think anything that you choose over your daily commitment can be addictive. You can be addicted to food. You can be addicted to smoking. You can be addicted to porn. You can be addicted to anything. I think people need to stop blaming porn for their fucking problems and actually look within themselves and figure their own shit out. And why are they acting and behaving in the way that they're behaving? Stop putting the blame on other stuff. Who are you? I am Alexis Fox. <laughs> Bye. And tell us a bit more about who are you? Oh, uh, I'm Alexis Fox. I'm an adult model and actress, a coffee bean dealer, a podcaster. Uh, I've hosted and produced comedy shows uh, called The Highest Fox Show, hence where the podcast The Highest Fox Show has come from. Uh, my coffee is H-A-F Coffee. Um, obviously, foxfans.com is my only fan, so subscribe to that. What else do you want to know? <laughs> Okay, that's interesting. So you have a podcast, you have your own brand of coffee, and also you have an OnlyFans. Which one makes the most money? <laughs> of course, OnlyFans does. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also a contract star for browsers, so I still shoot main, uh, mainstream um, adult work, obviously. So I'm still in that industry. I've been in the industry for 13 years plus. So current, ca uh, currently, how old are you? <laughs> Who asked that question? <laughs> you can look Me. that up. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. We I'll look dare you ask a lady that question. <laughs> we look this up and this is the age, guys. <laughs> so, uh, no, yes. I feel great, so... Yes. <laughs> so, uh, ca can you tell me more a bit uh, about your... So... You have a big exposure from Bra um, Brazzers. This is how everything started for you. Uh, can you tell me? Uh, the... I'm sorry. So you had a big exposure from. Oh, not a problem. We're going to keep that in. It's good. Yeah, content. no, that was my dog. Hold on one second, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Could you please clarify your question? Yes, so you started and you got a lot of exposure from the port side, Pornhub port with browsers. Like, what is the? Uh, I got exposure because I worked so much, not because of any one particular company. Over thirteen years of constantly being, um, you know, on set, you know, anywhere between fifteen to maybe twenty-five days a month, you build a brand for yourself. That's not because of one company. Um, I've been contracted with different companies throughout my career. Um, but it really took all the hard, my own hard work and effort to, you know, build my own brand and be up with the social media, be in constant contact with my fans. It does not come easy. Like it's a definite push. Okay. But, uh, so at the beginning, I imagine you had, nobody knew you and how, how, what was the big moment for you that kind of kick started everything? It's really the consistency throughout the last 13 and a half years of being on set and being a good personality and be able to fucking suck well. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know, like, what I, I don't really think there's like one significant thing that like, oh, boosted my career or anything like that. Um, it's just really just being consistent. You know, I've done a lot of scenes over, you know, 13 and a half years. It's not like I just started yesterday. Okay, uh, I'm I'm not very familiar with the with the industry. So can can you explain me a bit the behind the scenes, like uh, of how does the, this work? Like you just go there and you just start filming. There is like a lot of preparation before. Like how does this uh, stuff work? Well, I mean, it all depends on which scene. I mean, you know, an anal scene. There's going to be a little bit more prep into that, obviously. Uh, but you know, just as a general scene, um, I have a call time. I know when my hair and makeup's going to be done, wardrobe, who am I working with? There's testing. Uh, I get tested every, you know, at least every 14 days. A lot of times is actually, you know, between 10 and 12 if you count in weekends and holidays, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we have a testing standard that we all go by. Um, 
<clears throat> so, you know, you show up like any other kind of office or, you know, job. You show up on time, uh, you know, show up with a great attitude. Make sure your hygiene's on point. Make sure your testing's on point. That you come with a proper, you know, wardrobe and what you need to bring that day. You know, um, and you get into hair and makeup, uh, your scene partner or partners show up. Um, you you know who the director is or you meet who the director is, who the production person is. Uh, Brazzers also has an on-scene, on-set a liaison so that if anything happens on set, that it can be taken care of immediately, that there it can be addressed and that there's always safe in, so that there's always a safe work environment. Um, we go over a boundary checklist to make sure that, you know, hey, do you like choking? Do you like this? Do you like that? Because that can change from one scene to the next. Maybe you had a rough scene one day and you want a little bit of a lighter scene and you don't want to be choked that day. All that stuff goes into play. Plus, if there's a script, we go over our lines. We make sure that we're comfortable with the lines and the words that we're saying. Um, all that takes into consideration uh, if there's dialogue, obviously that gets done first. And then we move on to the, you know, the sex and the action um, that which needs to happen. Sometimes there's pictures taken throughout. Sometimes pictures aren't needed because it's not a promo shot. It just kind of depends. And do you like more like the story uh, porn or you like what is the best the stuff that you enjoy uh, doing more? Mm, I like a variety. It doesn't really matter to me whether I like playing a character and I also like the Gonzo. Gonzo is great because we can just, you know, it's like a free for all. We get to just have the sex the way we want to. Sometimes in the script, sometimes it's a little bit more scripted because it goes along with how the script is written. So like, you know, oh, you got to have sex underneath the table or some shit like that. Um, but, you know, where Gonzo is just like, you know, usually hot oil, et cetera, et cetera. I like it all. I mean, in, in, I'm in this because of the variety, not because I want like, you know, s you know, the same shit every day. So can, can you difference, like, are you enjoying <laughs> sex more when it's off camera or like you, you are so trained that you are, it's the same for you? Or maybe you enjoy um, it more on camera because you feel productive or something. <laughs> um, I like them for different reasons. You know, you know, something off sex, you know, I'm sorry, off camera is felt differently than, you know, when it's on camera. You know, I like it on camera because I like the audience. I like knowing them going to be watched. And then also like being not on camera. It's just like I don't have to worry about camera angles and just, you know, fuck whatever way I want, making any ugly face I want, doing whatever. I don't have to think like, oh, there's a camera angle because the people at home that's going to log on to this is going to need to watch and see what's going on. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So you like both for different reasons is the answer. I'm sorry? You like yeah, both I like it all for, for all different di reasons. Yeah. So you know, does, one is uh, more closed off and one is more open. So how uh, your porn career, so probably because of your porn career, you are able to have maybe more free conversations and maybe more uh, about sex. So you, this is more casual for you. So for I think for hu normal humans like me, like sex is taboo. But uh, for for <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I think after it is great, and I think more people should you know have more casual conversations, especially with their partners about sex. You know, maybe that's what people need to do, and you know, become more intimate with one another. I mean, if you can't like open up what what you like and you know what turns you on with your partner, you know, you got to reevaluate as to why not. You know. Um, those are the conversations should be fun and casual and laugh and, you know, talk among that and, you know, discover each other's, you know, fetishes or whatever, or even boundaries, what we like and don't like. So we can not like be so shy about that in the bedroom, um, you know, just open up about foreplay, uh, you know, regardless of who your partner is, all that stuff is different. Sometimes people hold back on their likes and dislikes because they just don't know how to open up with their partner. And it's sad. You know, we should, <laughs> to me, it's sad because we should be able to, you know, talk with our partners. Yes, it's a very casual conversation for me. Um, I think it's definitely because of being in the industry, but I've always been a very free spirit type of person. And to me, 
you know, sex, um, there's, you know, there's different types of sex for me. There's, you know, there's more intimate sex. There is, there is sex for the camera. There's sex that, you know, wow, this is a great shoot, uh, sex for my own content. It's just, it's just fun. There's so, so many different varieties. And I do, a, I have a, like a big variety of fans that like a variety of things. And I'm happy to do it because it's like giving that person pleasure. And that to me is, is enough pleasure. I don't have to particularly like that fetish. It's just like, oh, wow, this turns this person on. They're excited. They're going to get off on it. And to me, that's pleasure in itself. Wow. And I actually probably do this more in the industry because of the autonomy over my own time, not because of the sex. Does that make sense? No. Why not? <sighs> I, I didn't understand what you mean by the autonomy of your, you do this in the industry because of the autonomy of your own time. No. The autonomy, having the autonomy over my own time and you know, choosing how my days go and stuff like that uh, creates a lot of peace. I'm not stressed out. I don't have to answer back to anybody. I am my own boss. I answer to myself. I work for my own dreams. It's not just about the sex. It's more about like what I can do with all of that. And what so I've been mean, able to accomplish. So you mean this is uh, how, how you treat this? Like you, 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 even when you don't like something, you treat it like uh, uh, you are enjoying this. Even if what this don't is not, I like? I don't do anything no, because, I don't like. I don't understand what yes, you're saying. But, but you said before that even if it's something that I don't particularly like, I do it to please the other person. The f- no, I'm not saying that. Don't confuse my words. Don't uh, confuse my words. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm stupid. I'm trying to understand. May not be my fet- it may not be my fetish. I might not have a foot fetish. I'm not like, oh, feet get me off. However, I'm fine with doing, you know, you know, doing the content with foot and this, that, and the other because I know it's getting the other person off. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. Can you walk me a bit through the business side of things that you do, please? I'm sorry? Can you walk me a bit in the business side of things? Um, kind of clarify that because there's a lot of things that go so, on. Yes. Yeah, so how like much? What exactly money, do you want to uh, know? Uh, how much money you make with the OnlyFans? I'm not going to discuss what I make on OnlyFans. That's not uh, a good business. My earnings, uh, what I make on everything I do, is not just. It's not. It's not relevant to like anybody's business. I don't. I don't discuss that. <laughs> Not, not, not a problem, not a problem, but this is, I think, an interesting conversation. Like a, a lot of people wonder to see oh, how much money uh, people make with OnlyFans, how much money pe- maybe browsers pay you or how much money you make with your coffee. But if it's that something that you are not, yeah, interested I'm not interested to discuss, in discussing my yeah. rates or what I make on OnlyFans or in any of my businesses. Uh, can you explain me a bit? Uh, there is a lot of people helping you. Do you have a team to help you with stuff? I have a small team um, that helps me organize my life um, because I have a lot of things that are that are. I, I do a lot of different things. I don't just do porn. I don't just do um, like I said. I have coffee. I have a collaboration, and I work with a local brewer, so we have collabs and beer. Um, I just got back from Austin, Texas because I was a judge at a roast battle at the comedy mothership. So I'm constantly doing a lot of stuff. So yeah, I have a small team that I, um, have very close to me to help me organize my schedule, <clears throat> shipping of, uh, merch, shipping of coffee, uh, organizing guests on podcasts, you know, travel, um, taking care of my dogs, my house. So yeah, I have a small little team that I pay for uh, all of that. Yeah. About two, three like people. Hmm? About two, three people. Um, yeah, like probably two, three, four people. And it just kind of depends. Okay. Uh, so, uh, from, from your experience, uh, about, because I'm trying to become a bit of 
more free person uh, about this stuff? What is some advice that you give for a normal person like me or the audience watching, which they're not that free about their sexual stuff to... I'm sorry, say that question again? The question is, what is some advice that you give for normal people like me and the people watching, which they are not that free in their sexuality and that they're not as expressive and that open to sex like uh, you? Well, I mean, that can be various things. I mean, not being free, what do you, I don't even know what you mean by that. Like, does that mean that you're just, are you celibate, which is okay? I mean, you gotta listen to your own heart. I'm not gonna hear and press anybody to be more open and, or less open about stuff. You know, that's up to you to decide. But yes, what's but your definition of not I, being free sexually? Let, I'm a f- does that mean no, not I'm having a- multiple partners? Or does that mean that you're not open to different types of sex or different types of relationships? I don't know what that exactly, you know, like that's such a big yeah. wide term. I don't know how to answer you on that. Okay, so, be, so be more specific in your question. More free to explore uh, for example, this sexual stuff, because I heard, for example, this is a bit sensitive, that when people, uh, uh, boys have uh, a G spot in their ass, I I I, I heard that. Okay, so let's I'm say like, men, I, not boys. Okay, <laughs> let's keep bo- it to men and women, bo- um, boys, men. or any gender that's adult. Um, yes, you know, if, if if you're not wanting to, you know experiment with your prostate glands and don't experiment with it. Like that's, that's up to you to decide when you're ready or if, if you're ever ready for something like that. Some people want their asshole licked. Some people want a finger. Some people want to be pegged. It's whatever they feel they want to explore. Maybe they took it in baby steps and they're just a little further than you. It doesn't, you know, you just have to decide when you're ready for those types of things. Maybe do your research on it. You know, talk to your friends, talk to your talk to your partner about it, you know, or explore or do some self exploration first to see if you even like anything down there. You know, it's not for, it may not be for everybody, you know, like that's. There's so many many variations of sex and sexualities and people and what their likes and dislikes. You know, you shouldn't feel pressure to do this or that. You know, just do it when you feel if you are 100% ready to do that action. That's how I look at it. I don't do things at 99% because I don't want that 1% to bite me in the ass later. I just, you know, so to speak, I I wait until I'm 100%. You know what? I'm, I'm ready to try this. And then I'm going to move forward with it. But it takes, you know, me looking at things, you know, people let's tell, you know, talking to my friends about it. You know, if you're not, you just got to be open to communication. Are you closed off and even talking about sex? Yes, I'm a, I'm a bit scared. Like, you, not, like, are you scared to talk about sex with your partner? Uh, not with my partner. Are you with part- anybody? Are you, are you in a relationship? No, I'm not with anybody. Okay, do you do you sleep around? Do you like have one night stands or are you just like I need yes. to be in a relationship before sex? Yes, I do have one night stands. You have one night stands? Yes. So you have some freedom to sexuality though. I mean, that's more free, but are you not talking to your partners about sex when you're going taking them home like? <laughs> uh yes, but it is it's it's a bit uncomfortable because I, I grew up, my father is a priest. So I grew oh up in like, <laughs> in, in, in very strict uh, way. So I'm, I'm trying to make the, I don't know if you, when you are talking to me now, I'm a bit shy and generally I'm, I'm not shy. I'm, the, I'm, I'm crazy. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for making you feel shy. Uh, not my intention, but just asking you questions because that way I can answer you better and maybe give you your, fa- uh, get your audience and yourself a little bit more insight. That's why I'm asking you just to engage in this great dialogue because Maybe us talking about freely about your sexuality and how you feel about things may make you feel more comfortable talking to somebody else. If you're comfortable with having sex with someone, you should get comfortable with having a conversation and listening to your partner because you got to also comprehend what they're talking about, too. If they're uncomfortable, 
you know, maybe your partner wouldn't be comfortable putting anything in your ass in the first place. So you might have to do that, you know, self exploration on your own. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's respectable on all boundaries. Um, but I look at it that way. Like if, if you're, you know, just sex conversations will be uncomfortable at first until you get more comfortable with, you know, talking about it and talking maybe also, you know, it would be more comfortable when you have, you know, a partner that you see regularly as well. You know what I mean? Because you're, so, you know, after seeing someone after so many times, you become a little bit more comfortable. You start to start to learn their body. So maybe then that's where the exploration and the conversation. Hey, do you like it when I do this? You know, and then, hey, women are shy, too. Women and, and you know, women and men are and and. I want to say all genders, all genders are all people, all people can be shy and uncomfortable. It's not, you know, not with every partner. Am I like, well, hey, buddy, this is how it goes. You know, like I understand that there is, you know, because I also date outside of the industry. I prefer to date, you know, just anybody. <laughs> I just prefer to date outside the industry. So I'm not going to just jump down somebody and be like, hey, this is what I fucking like. And, you know, and, you know, I understand their sensitivities. You know, I'm going to, you know, it may be more, um, I may be more inclined to open the conversation in a very gentle manner, but, you know, it's just, you know, read your partner's body language. Don't be afraid. And it's okay. And, and I think where there's a lot of also uncomfortable is when you express your likes, you know, is that person going to be accepting or are they going to judge it? This, that, and the other, there's a lot of things that go on. I'm totally aware of that. Um, and it's okay to be uncomfortable because that's where you grow and that's where you learn. And that's, you know, you're going to be learning about your partner and also learning about yourself. So it's a win-win situation, I believe. Can you give us a bit of sex advice, how to become better at sex for boys and women? <laughs> Have more of it. <laughs> <laughs> Practice makes perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I have quite a lot of experience, sir. Um, <laughs> um, but, um, you know, sex advice is, again, you know, I'm going to go down and say, yeah, communication, comprehension, sex advice, self, you know, be open to self-exploration, know your own body, know what you like, you'll know what you turns you on, Be um, explore your partner's skin kiss their neck you know just all those things sex doesn't doesn't have to be what you see in the porn <laughs> do not use porn as education okay where the it's entertainment it's it that it's purely entertainment for you, folks it's not education um but but wh where they get it mostly wrong on porn there's no this is not human con like wh why you are giving this is pure entertainment and you cannot Because it is away. entertainment. It's not education. We're not here to teach you how to have sex. You know, it is absolutely entertainment. That's why it says adult entertainment and not adult education. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> so, you so you think you get a totally a different image from watching porn about what is uh, really like and what is... Uh, well, for instance, let me give you an example. Like I get a lot of questions in my emails, like how do I get my girlfriend, my wife or whatever, my partner to squirt like you in this, in these films? Well, first of all, what we do on camera, the exaggerated splashing and coming, you know, all this fluid coming out of me, I drink about four to five Pedialytes and that is not a natural feminine ejaculation type of squirt. Okay. Like if you're going to get, if your lady squirts, or can feminine, you know, it, it, you know, have feminine ejaculation. It may be only, you know, like a tablespoon or so that comes out. Some maybe a little bit more. You know, I've depends how relaxed she is, how much you turned her on, how, you know, how her body is reacting. It that takes a long time and a lot of trust. You know, it's not going to happen like it happens on porn. So if you're looking at porn and be like, that's how I make my girl squirt. It's not going to happen in the way that you think it's going to happen. So, you know, again, communicate and comprehend. Some ladies take a while to relax with their partners. 
you know, um, it just depends, you know, again, just explore and relax. It's not, again, that's why it's not education, it's entertainment. Wow. So you suggest that, uh, that, uh, how do we learn about sex if porn is not the way to learn about sex? <laughs> well, there's, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can, it, that's where self exploration and, you know, getting to know your partners, you know, sex, like sex doesn't, there's not one way to have sex. So, you know, knowing how your partner and, um, how you work, it's, you know, and being open to different things is how you're going to learn about sex. You know, pick up a book. I'm sure you can probably find some books on audio or, you know, go to the bookstore and pick up some sexuality books. Um, you did know, you or read a comic did you ever, book or something did, like that. <laughs> did but you I, ever I, read, I a book? read a book to learn how to suck dick? I suck dick because, <laughs> you know, figured it out. <laughs> So we go back to the roots of your first answer. Have more sex. <laughs> have more sex. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, I know for me, my, my likes have changed over the years because of, you know, different sexual experiences, being open to different sexual experiences. You know, um, I wasn't like now I can definitely make myself naturally squirt, um, you know, and, you know, do all of that. But I know how to do that. Um, that took a while for me to teach myself that, you know, um, it didn't come from just one book or one scene or one thing or one conversation, you know, um, it came from just, you know, experimenting with my body and figuring things out and, you know, what, you know, there's even YouTube channels out there for ed education. Um, yeah. So, yeah, have more sex. Uh, can you uh, please... Uh, so, you were always open, you said, from the young age uh, to sex. Uh, can you walk me with... Uh, uh, from, like, 15, 16, like, can you uh, walk me with your young age and your relationship with it? Yeah, I think like, you know, and, you know, adding, you know, anyone around that age, you know, <laughs> you know, hormones start to arise, things start to be like, wait, what's happening here? What's going on? Curiosity comes into play. You start, you know, you start trying to like look for things or things you just realize certain things are kind of exciting in, in a whole brand new manner, you know. So, you know, I'm just like any, you know person that for the first time experiments, you know, I, I don't really know where to go with that question. <laughs> but so no, your, your parents were, uh, very, uh, were free as well. And like, or you grew up in a conservative family T touch a bit more of the, uh, of your story. I, I don't, my parents had nothing to do with my sexual activity. Um, and they weren't really conservative. They weren't really liberal. I kind of just did my own thing. I was a very, I was like a loner. I was a very like, I'm going to go do an experiment, my own, do my own shit for a really long time. <laughs> so I don't think they had, they didn't really have much of a uh, influence on any of my decisions. <laughs> Still none today, actually. So. Do you still have a good relationship with your family? Yeah, I do. My father passed away and um, I have a mom and I have a brother and yeah, we have a good relationship. Do, um, do you I've they always been a lone wolf. I'm not really super close like that. I don't have like a big attachment style to people. Um, you know, but we have a good relationship. I'll do anything for her, do you know. Do do they find the the in the beginning that you started in this industry? Did they find that weird? Did you had some conversations with them? Hard conversations? No. Why would I? I was already an adult. I pay my own bills. I'm not going to have a conversation with my family about my career choices at that point. And 
and they never brought it up themselves. This is not a conversation that the uh, the uh, very interesting. Uh, I'm I'm curious. You spoke before about uh, open relationships and like close relationship. What do you prefer out of all this experience that you have? Do you prefer to have one partner? Do you prefer like to have multiple partners? Um, I prefer having more of an open, more multiple partner type of situation. Um, because I I'm kind of a big person in my personality and. Um, you know, again, it's not always about the sex either. I just, sometimes you really enjoy spending intimate moments with people and different, uh, that kind of bring out different parts of you, you know what I mean? So I also don't like living with anybody and I prefer dating outside my own city. Um, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. If you live in another country, you probably have a better chance of dating me than you know living in the same city as me. But um, I don't know. I'm just not very. I don't know. I've had monogamous relationships. I've had very long monogamous relationships. Um, and then I would always be like, God, I just, I would just, I don't know. I don't like being around someone a hundred percent of the time. I don't want to come home to someone all the time. I'm like go home, go find a place to live. You be my neighbor, <laughs> but like just go home. <laughs> so yeah, I like a more of an open type of relationship. Can, can you can you can you tell me more of how does it look now in your life? Like you have like for five different people that you see, you have like uh, how does that look in in real life? Um, I'm not in any serious relationships with anybody. I just, you know, like, uh, there's a couple people that I enjoy and I'll like fuck around with them, but I'm not, I'm not in any relationship. I'm just, I don't have the time to like, I really, yeah, I just really don't really want to commit any, let me don't say I could make the time. So let me just rephrase that. I don't want to commit any extra time into a relationship um, when I'm working on so many parts of my career right now, it would be very unfair to them because I wouldn't be able to give them the attention that they would deserve. What do you want to accomplish in the future? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. What do you want to accomplish in the future? <sighs> mm. Well, I would love to just, you know... Well, the goal is the goal is to uh, and what I will accomplish in the future is just to have some land in maybe Central America somewhere where I'll garden the fuck out of it. Permaculture, set up some like cute little A-frame little homes for my friends to come down and visit so they don't have to stay in the same house. See how I work that in. Have my own house with like a rocking chair and just write books. And garden and have a nice, peaceful life. Be internally happy like I am. You know, I'm very, very happy on the inside. I pour a lot of love into myself. I make sure I do that all the time. And I suggest that for anybody else to do that, too. Um, don't walk around hungry. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's what I want to accomplish in the future. What do you mean you pour a lot of love in yourself? I take a lot of time to myself um, where I just, you know, I turn everything off. I go out into nature, breathe some fresh air, think about things, toss some ideas around. I spend time with myself. I spend a lot of time with myself. And I think when you spend time with yourself, you learn to appreciate yourself a lot more. I give myself to, you know, I take myself out to dinner. I take myself on solo trips. I enjoy I enjoy my alone time. I don't. It's, it's a lot of competition out there. So, a lot of competition with me. So good luck. So yeah. <laughs> now I understand the joke. <laughs> yeah. It's like I, I enjoy so, my I enjoy my time so much because I get to do so many things, um, and I literally have you know and just so you just keep pouring that love into yourself, and become really really super happy. 
I think when I, I'm from, I'm not from United States. I grew up in a small country in Europe named Cyprus. And when I came to United States and understood that nobody spends time alone with themselves, they always have around, them. around them people and all this stuff. It's crazy. So you, you agree with the statement that I observed? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think a lot of people need to spend more time with themselves. I think they need to spend time off social media, spend time alone and get to know themselves and not be like, not get anxiety about it. Like I'm probably more, <laughs> I'm so comfortable. I love my alone time. You cannot wrestle me out of my alone time. I actually literally will get a, like, I, I have no problem saying no. Like, no, my Sundays are for me. Fuck off. Like, I don't want to hear from you. I'm not going to answer your emails. Don't, you know, if it's an emergency, that's one thing. But like, I, I like, I need that time. I spend so much of my time with this, like, there's such an energy exchange constantly, you know, whether you're on social media, energy exchange, or you're with people. I mean, I have a lot of people in my life to do different things. There, there's, there's always something. So for me, spending alone time is like one of the best gifts you can give to yourself. And get off fly and go spread, you know, go out and take a hike in nature, do something, you know, I don't know. For uh, me, it works. I know it's not for everybody, like, but for me, it works. Like I, I've spent times in the jungle, like I've flown down to Peru and I volunteered as a physical therapist because I, I used to be a massage therapist and all this other stuff. Um, and then I'll spend time in the jungle, you know, and, you know, live off the land and be away from everything and anything from this from this society. And it's it's so God, it just fills you up and you feel good and you come back refreshed and rejuvenated and clear thoughts, not inundated with all the crap that we get with every single day. So, yeah. I understand 100% that you love. You spoke with so much passion about you spending uh, time alone. <laughs> so, yes, <laughs> I can relate 100% with this. But can you tell me a bit? So you have so much demand as a human, probably from men most of the times. Like so many people want to speak with you, hang out with you, have sex with you. And did you have any weird incidents that happened to you that you saw a person in the streets and they recognized <coughs> you or you went to a convention or something like that and like people grabbed your ass or why i don't know like did you have any weird things happen to you like this um well for most of my i, I have to say I, I get recognized a lot like i was just in austin and i i got so much love in austin and everybody was so respectful like Regardless, we were in a club or outside the club or anything like that. Everybody was so respectful. So for the majority of the prime, never a problem. I feel at conventions, especially ones that have like booze where people can leave their little ambitions down a little bit, they can become a little bit more touchy feely. I think because of the atmosphere, they feel that it's okay, but it's not. So don't do it. <laughs> Ask permission. Some people don't mind. Some people do. Some people will charge. Some people be a straight no. Um, don't try to kiss us on the lips. That's weird. Like, first of all, we get tested. I don't know where you're coming from. Um, so that would be, I mean, that's the only time any, like any of that sometimes happen again. It's very rare with me. I don't know. I think my fans just really respect me a lot. Um, to the fact that they don't want to do anything that's going to, um, upset a person and I, I think that's a real fan like why would your fan want to like do something that's disrespectful and you know at least ask you know like I don't mind I've been asked like hey can I do this or like no or you know yeah I grab a boob and I'm like no that's we're in public no <laughs> like, that's weird um and then to be like oh okay I'm sorry just thought I'd ask and it's it's fine it's fine to ask but like don't just assume um so that's just like, some you know a future tip for anybody that's out there but um yeah, that would be probably the only weird, you know, you know, fan experiences. But I, I have to say, majority of my fan experiences have always been really great. So, did you sleep with a fan? No, I don't do those contests. <laughs> <laughs> so it, that turns you don't like uh, when someone is a fan to to 
engage with them in this way? Well, Mary, look at it this way. I would, I just want to be your fantasy. I'm not looking to be anybody's reality. If you're following me and you're watching my films, <laughs> then let's just keep it as a fantasy. I'm not looking to become your reality. Interesting. So can you walk me a bit through your daily life? Like, uh, how do you, how does your life work? You woke up in the morning today. We're like, well, how does your day look yesterday or today? Um, it all depends on what I did the night before. I know. <laughs> um, majority of the time, like generally, um, if I'm at home, my routine, I usually get up anywhere between five and six. Sometimes six thirty. In the morning. Um, I get, wow. Yeah. Um, without an alarm clock, I just get up um, naturally, and I take care of my fur kids. I have two dogs and a rabbit. Um, at least feed them, make sure they get outside or do whatever they need to do. I get dressed. I go to the gym. I don't know. Sometimes I have shit to do after the gym. Get home. Answer people all throughout this entire time. I multitask all throughout the day. It's kind of hard to take somebody through my day. It's kind of, you know, I mean, it's just every day is a little bit different. But basically my morning starts out the same, I guess. I eat. I cook. I work online all throughout the day until I go to sleep. So online? I'm always answering. What? Yeah, I'm always what? answering mes messages on OnlyFans or any of the other um, apps that I'm on. Um, I do not answer DMs on public social media. So <laughs> trying to write me on Instagram, it's not going to happen. If you try to write me any or Twitter or any of those other places, I'm not going to respond back to you. Um, I only respond back to people that are on my OnlyFans, that are subscribed to me, or on my Sex Panther. That is it. Um, but I'm on that pretty much all day. Um, I shoot content all day, whether it's safe for work or not safe for work. Little things throughout what, the day. What do you mean sa safe work or safe for work? Like TikToks, Reels, IG, those normal things. You know, things that I can't, I'm not going to put on not safe for work sites. Um, computer work, coffee work, podcast work, communicating how, with my friends. How much of your time, team. how much time of your time goes to your uh, public social media, which is not like sex content and nude related? Oh, I don't know. I've never calculated it. A lot. But you <laughs> I don't know. I'm curious to see if it's mostly most of your time goes to public social media or No, most, most of my of time your... goes to my not so not safe for work stuff. Because I'm on OnlyFans okay. all day. I'm not answering people on IG. I'm just creating some content, you know. So I mean I, I've never really calculated any time. I don't have any reference for that. It's and just I know it's a lot. But, you know, it's just really, you know, making sure I'm posting, you know, whatever they need to be posted. And I still take breaks from it. Like, I haven't posted on my Instagram. Um, I've posted on my story, but I haven't posted on my Instagram in a while. Like, I think you need to take breaks from that, too. But I never really take super long break. I The only time I took a break from my only friends was when I hiked Havasupe. That's only because there wasn't any Wi-Fi at that time. Um, cause I lived off grid for that, but that's about it. That was like three days. Um, yeah. Wow. So you're super, I, I super, day, so. <laughs> super, super committed to the OnlyFans thing. But, uh, I am, I'm curious I mean, to see. I why not? People are, are subscribed. And so like anytime people are subscribed to you, I mean, if you have a business online and, and people are asking you questions, that's because they want answers pretty quickly. A guy with their dick in their hand and what a dirty talk. They want to talk to you immediately. You get what I'm saying? Like, they're not going to sit there and be like, hey, oh, uh, you know, so, you know, <laughs> hey, I'm I'll be with you in an hour. they will be like, uh, I got a hard dick now. I, I got to do this now. Maybe, you know, maybe they're jerking off in the shower because I got a wife in the kitchen. Who fucking knows? I don't know. I don't get that personal with them unless they want to be. You know, I have some fans that just want to talk. They're lonely. They need to, you know, maybe they've got a busy life and they're. 
somewhere where, you know, they don't make a lot of friends or something like that. I give them an outlet to somebody to talk to. I, there's a lot of things I provide for them. So wow. it's not that I've just committed to that one. I'm committed to any subscription site that I have. I just, that's the one that's mostly promoted out of all the other ones. Cause that's the one that most people seem to be using at this moment in time. You know what I mean? So why I not promote that one the most? So you do some uh, sex talk with them via messages, like you send them voice message, you send them some pictures. In the DM, yeah. And In the DM, we do sexting, we do Skypes, we do live shows, um, uh, audio wow. customs, video customs, cock ratings, you name it. Cock ratings, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's one of my popular I do them all the time <laughs> how does that work <laughs> well they ask me if I do them and I say yes and then they give them my my price sorry my nose itches for some reason I don't know why I just came back from like Austin Texas and I live in the desert so every time like the when you go from moisture to the desert it messes everything up anyway sorry about that um yeah, so they asked me if they want to, you know, hey, do I do cock ratings? I'm like, yeah, of course. Um, I asked them if they want written audio or video, give them the prices for all of that. And when they agree how to whatever they agree to. Can, can we say how much it is? No. No. <laughs> so okay. I'm talk about it. <laughs> um, subscribe. Uh, <laughs> um once they agree on it, you know, I'm very reasonable with everything. Um, but anyway, so once they agree on that, I have them submit materials. I want a soft pick, a hard pick. I want three points of view that includes your testicles and your dick because I like to see what the ball to dick ratio. Because sometimes people will have a really big dick and super small balls. I just find it really interesting. Um, I like the soft and the hard pick because I want to know if you're a grower or the shower. Because I, I think growers, sometimes like they'll be like really small and they'll grow. And I'm like, whoa, where did the fuck did that come from? Super interesting. Um, I like all the points of view. Just so you know, see manscaping. Are you taking care of your shit? Are you just letting the thing grow like jungle, which is gross. Don't do that. And also don't shave it all the, all the way off. Please don't. Just manscape it. Be a man. Just be a man. Um, what else could I take in consideration? Oh, I let them send me a 10 second jerk off clip, which is usually their come off their come clip, which is funny. And why I have them send all this in is because it gives me a lot of shit to talk about. You're you're paying me for a cock rating. You want my quote unquote professional opinion on your dick. So send me shit to talk about. Sending me one photo of your dick next to a fucking toilet, which happens a lot. I have nothing to say. I have nothing to say with that one photo because let me just tell you, I see a lot of dicks. All the dicks look the same to me after a while. What? Yours curved to the right? Big fucking deal. If you give me the material, shit, I will talk about your dick for fucking nine minutes sometimes. Ask my fans. Sometimes it's fucking great. Like, they'll send in me a lot of material and I'm like, thank you. I'll applaud them. I'll give them a higher score. I mean, I might as well make it interesting for me to do. So does all this stuff turn you, uh, so you are probably turning on a lot of times per day when you are talking about a hard dig and when you are seeing pics. No, I, shoot, this stuff I shoot my cock ratings and my customs uh, once a week on a particular day. So I'm not doing that every day. What I'm doing is I'm talking, I'm taking the orders, I'm doing that, and I'm organizing and I'm sending, hey, organize these for me so that when we sit down on Tuesday, which is going to be tomorrow, right? When we sit down tomorrow, I'm like, all right, now these are the Skypes we're going to do. We got that. Da, 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 da. Okay, cool, cool. And I might say, okay, I'm going to need help filming this. That, because I'm not always ready all day. Maybe I'm out running errands, but I'm still talking to people. Do you understand? I'm not just sitting at home ready to, you know, turn the switch on. I'm not, I'm not doing that all day. Um, a lot of it's just a lot of talk all day. But probably... When you are talking like DMs uh, about this stuff and you are on the grocery store, it's tempting, right? What's tempting? It's tempting to talk like you turn on while you are in the grocery store when you are yeah, doing all this. Yeah, it's, it's kind of fun for me, especially when I'm like at the grocery store and I'm like, you know, I keep it very hidden and stuff like that. I don't open up pictures and because, you know, I don't want to be, I'm not trying to... Um, 
have other people's eyes on it that don't need to have their eyes on it. Um, so I'm very respectful in that way. You know, what's really fun for me too is when I'm out to dinner. Cause like I said, I, I don't take myself out to dinner. Love it. And I'll have my headphones in. So it's very quiet and I'll leave audio messages, dirty audio messages when I'm at dinner. And it really turns the guys on because they, they're like, oh my God, this is like public. And she's fucking out there having dinner telling me like, she wants me to put my, you know, take my hard dick out and start stroking it. And, you know, it's just fun. But I keep it very, you know, keep it under wraps. I also make sure I'm not sitting near anybody close. It's usually not, you know what I mean? Like, I I don't want to sound like I'm just out there saying a lot of shit in, in, in public. I'm not trying to be rude by any means. I am very respectful, but I'll do it very quietly and off to the side. <laughs> or I'm in my Jeep. <laughs> you don't know how many times I've had crazy conversations in my Jeep. Windows up, windows up. <laughs> <laughs> I, when I'm hiking, I'm, or well, until at least until I, uh, I've, I've had a couple when I'm camping and stuff like that. But uh, I don't know. As if I but have it, service. It, it makes total sense, though, because that's your actual business. Like, you need to, yeah. this is your customers, this is your stuff. So you need to, it makes sense to be spending you a lot of, you know, of, of your you. day. Yeah. And I'm very hands on. I'm not one of those people that I, I just uh, I have I love creative control, I guess. I don't know. Maybe it's it's my brand. So I'm I'm very you know, I like being hands on. I like I actually really like talking to my fans most of the time. <laughs> Sometimes some I'm, I'll be honest, some fans are a little annoying. But, uh, you know, there's people in our life that are also very annoying. <laughs> so, you know, so be it. That's just life, you know, it's not this or that, but, um, yeah, actually I, I really adore my fans. I, and like I said before, most of them, I like, I would say probably 98 to 99% of the time have always been super respectful. Almost to the point they're like nervous when they meet me and it happens a lot in the airport. Um, so I always look like a wreck and I'm like, great. I look like a wreck and I'm meeting a fan, but they're always like super nervous and I don't know. It's really cute. Do do they come up to you and like they want a picture? They want a chat? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they'll come up and be like, "Excuse me, I hate to bother you. Is it okay? You know, um, I'm a big fan. You know, and they're discreet about it and super nice. And it's, I mean, it's really endearing. It's it's endearing, really. It's just, um, it's really cute. Actually, when I was coming back from Austin, it happened. I went I went through TSA and these. Three guys, they look like college guys, uh, pulled me up. I'm like, can, can we get a picture? Can we get a picture? And I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's no problem. I mean, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have won the awards and been, you know, have, I've, have had such a, a, you know, 13 plus months, years in this industry if it wasn't for my fans. You know what I mean? So I'm all, it's, I'll always try, you know, as long as they're respectful. I'll always take the time out to go and take a t picture with you and, you know, make sure that I shake your hand and say hi and, and do those things. I think it's important, you know, just for so these people. You, you mentioned in the beginning that it was so much hard work and you were very proud about uh, all the hard work that, that you did. So this is what you... Because I'm in the YouTuber, I'm a YouTuber, I have whatever, two and a half million subscribers on YouTube, and I'm oh, only yeah. doing this three years. So you think this is what brings huge success to one field. It's like actually doing it consistently for so many years. Being consistent. Being consistent is always like, and being consistent, even like, even if you like, you're going to have waves and just staying consistent and doing it, it's going to pay off in the long run going to build your it's going to just it's going to build your brand it's going to build who you are it's going to open up so many opportunities and so much abundance consistency is where it's at with a lot of that stuff you got to be available to do that if you make a commitment that you're going to be a content creator on youtube or wherever the wherever you want to be and in whatever you want to do in your own business be fucking consistent follow through when you don't fucking feel like it there's days I don't feel like doing certain shit. I didn't feel like doing certain shit yesterday and I had to do it because, you know, I had to fucking do it. <laughs> like, you know, there's, it comes down to me. So as much as you put into it is as much as you're going to get out of it. If you want to slack off and do nothing, don't expect great, 
great things to happen. I'm sure over, you know, the three years you've been doing YouTube, you were consistent as fuck with that. What is the thing that you enjoy most in your life now? Oh, uh, thing I enjoy the most in my life. God, I've been really enjoying the shit out of life, really. I'm just at this point in my life where I'm just like, I'm just living the fuck out of it. I think that's what I'm enjoying the most. Like, just saying yes to a bunch of these opportunities and new experiences. Like, doing, like, you know what I've been really into lately? I've been doing a lot of stuff that literally just scares the shit. Like, will make my heart pound and scare me a little bit. I'm like, let's, let's do that. That seems really exciting. <laughs> and it's been exciting. I feel like I'm really, like, fully living so much of my life. And to me, that's been, it's been my favorite part so far. You always been like that. What living? Yeah. A lot. Living a, a hundred percent. I say yes to a lot of opportunities. They so like, I, you know, I moved out of my house when I was in high school, joined the military Went to put myself through college, paid my student loans off myself. Thank you. Um, moved around, started businesses. Yeah, I just say to I say yes, and I just go for it. So yeah, kind of always been that way. I love What is living. Some stuff? Life is exciting, and and I, that doesn't mean I haven't had fucking dips. <laughs> I have, but some of those dips have been my greatest like. Um, learning experiences is cheesy or like classic that may sound, but it really is true. Like some of those falling on your face times in my life have been the greatest catalyst for, uh, who, who made me in today. I mean, I think you have to live and feel everything, you know, like it's not just, you know, feeling good every day, feel bad days too, it's, or bad moments as well. I don't really have bad days anymore. I would say I have bad moments once in a while, but that's about it. I'm hormonal. I'm a chick. It happens. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Are you making notes on the side? <laughs> yes, I'm writing it. I'm writing the questions that I want to ask next. Yeah, I like it. So, uh, uh, what is uh, some uh, the best sex that you ever had in your life, or the weirdest place that you ever had sex? Both. Huh? Best sex and the weirdest sex. Yes. Do you remember the best sex that you had in your life? I think I've had a lot of great sex. I don't know. I can't like, I don't know. I don't remember. I don't know. There's not one particular one that I can think like, oh, wow, it blew my fucking mind. And, I've had and a lot of great sex. Will, will, I've had a lot of sex. will get offended. <laughs> what? <laughs> all the others will get offended if you say one. That's why you are not saying one. <laughs> I, I don't know about that. But do you, I'm like, you know how much sex I've had? Like, I, I, so, like, how much? I, my favorites are... It, Oh, fuck, let me move these out of the way. Um, you know, I had a great orgy scene. That was really good sex. That was a lot of fun. That was in my Unbound. I wrote, I helped um, write Unbound. That was really cool. That orgy. I like orgies. I like group sex a lot. Those are fun. Weird sex. Why? I don't know about weird sex. I mean, sometimes. Why, why you like orgies? Um, is, just because I like the multiple partners and the, all the sensations and I like to watch as much as I like being watched. I don't that, know about weird sex. I mean, I just, I mean, look at some of my scenes. I'm sure I've done some weird ass sex. <laughs> like I know, like getting stuck in a dryer. I'm not like, <laughs> that's not normal sex. <laughs> Just watch my scenes. Is are you are you organizing orgies outside of the porn as well? Uh, uh. Um, I have been to some orgy parties that were organized outside of work and stuff like that, and uh, they were just as safe where everybody was tested and everybody had to be, you know. 
I'm just as safe outside of work as I am in work. I'm not trying to like, you know, get with somebody that's not tested and, you know, and stuff like that. I'm trying to, you know, stay, I stay just as safe outside of work as I am in work. So, yeah. So you don't, you don't remember the craziest place that you ever had sex? <sighs> I've had so much sex over the last so many years. I don't, I've had sex in abandoned hotels on set, you know, <laughs> so, and bowling alleys. That was for fuck team five. So I've had sex in, in bands. Like I had sex in a, it was a, oh God, it was supposed to be a guy that was in a garbage truck guy. And we had sex in the front seat of that garbage truck. I've had a lot of sex. That's so, like, to me, those questions are super hard for me because I just, I don't even know. I couldn't even tell you how many scenes I put out. Like it's hundreds. So, so you, you don't, if I ask you how many times you have sex a month, do you know the number? It may just depends on how many content shoots I've set for myself. And if I'm meeting up with anybody, that number always varies. I don't have a set number. And always when you are going on set, it's exciting for you or a lot of times you don't want to go on set? No, most of the time I'm really excited. I would say, I don't remember a time that I wasn't excited to go to set. I love what I do. It's not like, you know, I got to go to an office between nine and whatever and talk to a shitty fucking boss. What I do is quite fun, so. So, do you, do you think, like, a porn career is similar to, like, a football player career? Like, is the, uh, you have an expiration date? I mean, only if your mind allows you to have that expiration date. I mean, I know that, for me, I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. You know, I mean, for some people, maybe they, for them, they do. But for me, I do not want to continue to work until I don't want to anymore. <laughs> so I don't know when that will be. I don't have a set date for that. So I think the society. It's kind of weird. Like they, no one asked any other woman in any other career field. Hey, how long are you going to be a teacher for? How are you? How long are you going to be a CEO for? How long are you going to be a YouTuber for? Are you going to do that all your life? Yes, true, but like a football player. Do you have an expiration play date for that? A football but player. A but a football player is getting hit. That's why he has an expiration date. Their contract is actually for life. I watched a documentary on a football player and, the doc and, and how bad their contracts are. Their contracts are a lot of times for life, but the reason why they have an expiration date is because they're actually doing something that they're getting physically hit with all the time. I'm not getting physically hit. I'm not getting concussions. I mean, I do Muay Thai and boxing. I have more chances of that, of something like that happening than that. Oh, I also do wrestling now, too. So, like, I have more chances of that hurting me and giving me an expiration date than the particular job. Like, I'm very, like, there is, do you realize that there's an STD problem in retirement homes? Just because you're getting older, it doesn't mean you're going to stop having sex. I think people, that's a closed-minded in uh, question and a closed-minded frame of mind because, Again, you're not asking anybody else, how long are you do how long are you gonna do YouTube for? How long are you gonna be a TikToker? How long are you gonna do this Instagram shit for? How long are you gonna be an influencer for? Can you really do all that all your life? So you think you can go as much as your mind and willingness allows you and and the boundaries yeah. are set from uh, for other people. I'm in great health. I'm in great health. I feel great. I'm I'm probably healthier now than I ever been in my entire life. Why would I, and I'm highly sexual and my libido is still very high. Why would I stop? Why very would I have an expiration date on that? So uh, I ask every guest on this podcast, uh, this question, if I give you $1 trillion, how do you spend it to fa have the maximum impact to the world positively? 
<sighs> one trillion dollars. Well, I would hopefully, um, I would definitely want to invest that in things that are going to, you know, make that trillion dollars grow to help impact the whatever I want to impact the planet with. Um, I don't know. I just have to sit down and think about it. But I definitely would want that money to grow so that I could. So I think the only way you're going to impact the, the planet in, the, or, you know, in a positive way is impacting several organizations to help things around the world, whether it's, you know, uh, climates or animals and just teaching people, educational systems, you know. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of things you'd want to do with it, but you definitely didn't, you would definitely wouldn't want to just spend the, you know, three trillion and not be able to get any returns by, you know, you want re returns to reinvest that into other programs to continue the positive impact so that you can talk, constantly do it am i making sense does that make sense to you yes yes i don't know what those investments would be i mean i would have to do a shit ton of research and get you know advisement on that from a lot of people but you would want that to continue to give you returns so you continually invest just like i money i make i invested in my businesses so that i can continually get returns back in some way or another you know some are more aggressive, some are a little bit more moderate, but that way I, I have money coming in and over here I bought a house so that I could build equity to gain, you know, eventually turn this house into an Airbnb or a shoot house or whatever else I want to make it into. Buy another piece of property, do that again. It's a constant wave of positively impacting my life on a daily basis. That's why I work, the, or like, that's why I'm happy to work on all my businesses every single day because I know it's going to, I do things in my, pre, for in my, for my, I do things in my present self for my future self all the time. But I noticed that you put a lot of emphasis on sustainability, something that will keep growing. So mm -hmm. this is part of it. Yeah. So I would love to see like, you know, permaculture used. Versus so much agriculture, so we can get some topsoil back, so we can grow better crops. Hmm. <laughs> There's a lot of things. So, do you think porn is affecting the world in a negative or positive way? Why is it affecting the world anyway? <laughs> I don't understand. I don't know. Uh, I don't think it's affecting. How's it affecting people negatively? Like I, I get asked a lot, like, do I feel porn is addictive or this or that? I think anything that you choose over your daily commitments can be addictive. You can be addicted to food. You can be addicted to smoking, you can be addicted to porn. You can be addicted to creating. You can be addicted to anything. Um, that's a personal decision. That's a personal thing. I don't, I don't think it's a worldly thing. I think people need to stop blaming porn for their fucking problems and actually look within them side, look within themselves and figure their own shit out. And why are they acting and behaving in the way that they're behaving? Stop putting the blame on other stuff. So you shouldn't say the casino is for a fault that I lost all my money is my fault that I lost all my money. It's your fault. Not the casino's fault. It is your fault for not knowing when to stop. It's your fault but, for not putting yourself in check. But Being by more having self the aware casino, when your behavior is getting out of control. But by having the casino, I'm getting a bit more philosophical now, but by having the casino there, you are, because humans are, cannot control themselves, a lot of them, so you are, kind of manipulating still society. Something. Yeah, I don't feel that the casino is at all a fault. I think you're at fault for losing your money. And I think you should take accountability for your own actions and your own behaviors and stop play, you know, stop blaming on an inanimate object that has nothing to do or is completely emotionless and vibration. When there's a lot of people that can obviously control their behaviors and their actions. And maybe, you know, I said, no, I don't feel the casino it is all, at all a fault. Are you addicted to porn, to, to sex? No, I go days without sex. 
if I was addicted, I'd be like, you know, leaving here and be like, you know, try to fuck my neighbors or some shit like that. And I don't do that. Yeah. I love sex. I think it's great. I enjoy it. I'm in control of my sexuality. I love it. I'm learning about it. I'm able to explore it. But to say I'm addicted to it, I I choose my life and my my behavior is over like, you know, again, to me, addiction would be like, oh, I can't can't leave my house until I have sex or something. Like, I don't know. Like when you can't just go on about your daily life and you're choosing that particular behavior, then you know, over your health. Look at food. You know, why are people fucking 500 pounds? At what point when you couldn't leave your house were you like, oh, this is unhealthy? It's not the food's fault. It's your inability to control that behavior. You probably may, it could be a chemical imbalance within yourself. It could be a physiology thing. I'm not saying it's a mental. It could be physiology. It could be, you know, you're, we're a complex creature. You know, figure it out. Get to know yourself. So I want you to do something really, really important. I want you to give dating advice for boys. I would prefer not giving it. I don't want to be connected with teenagers or kids. Not bo not boys, <laughs> man. This is what I because I'm 23, okay. so I'm okay, like I see man, myself. Please. As a boy, but young yes, men. men. Young men. <laughs> young what, men. what advice do you want as a young man? <laughs> yes. What kind of advice? Are you 23? Yes. <laughs> Look at you, 23. Good for you. Um, no wonder you're. Yeah, you know what? People are just shy in their 20s. You know, don't be. Don't feel bad because you're a little shy about communicating sex in your 20s. You're still figuring out your own sex. Shit. You know what I mean? So yeah, if you want to get better at it, just have more sex. Um, but yeah, okay, so 23, young, young men. Uh, I, w I mean, honestly, I would give like even young lady, I would give anybody young, you know, just focus on, you know, who you are, um, work life or college student balance, whatever that is for you, figure out what your passions and dreams are. Don't be afraid to take those risks. Realize that. You know, things are going to go up and down all the time. Um, but yeah, follow follow your heart on a lot of stuff. It's going to lead you in the right places. So not particularly any specific advice. It's more like follow <laughs> just to well, you. What advice do you want? I mean, if you want particular, ask me, like, what, what part of your life do you want advice on? So how, how do I find a girl? How do I find the right girl oh, no, for How to find a girl? Okay. Um, <laughs> don't follow any of those math and masculine podcasts. <laughs> um, how to find a girl. Um, Go I follow and, uh, Andrew Tate. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's actually worse off. I think there's people worse off than Andrew Tate that are online still today. So. I think he was just, I think he was just minimal compared to what I've seen. Um, I went down a rabbit hole on that. I was like, God, what are these people fucking talking about? Anyway. Um, and you disagree know, I, with I don't, really, that, yeah, I don't you really give young men advice. I mean, if you want to find, you know, a, a, if you want to find a partner or whatever, pick up some fucking hobbies and go, you know, join a group or something. You know, put yourself in a place in which you're going to meet people with like, with uh, a like, um, things that you guys will have something in common and maybe that will spark a conversation and, and you know and then all of a sudden you'll meet somebody new i mean I, i don't i don't do dating sites i don't do any of that i mean that's how i do it i i do it the old-fashioned way i guess i go and actually meet people in person <laughs> see if there's anything in common have a conversation you can tell a lot in a conversation with a person the first time you know if you go on a date Make sure you don't go on a date where you guys are quiet the whole fucking time. Go on a date where you go to dinner. Buy the buy that other person. If you're if you're asking, go and buy that person dinner and talk. And then go drop them off. Do it drop where you're them talking. Off. They get to, yeah. Or we'll do whatever. I don't know. But definitely talk. I mean, you, that's the whole point of a date. Get to know the other person. 
So you do it more in real life. You don't like you are not doing the online dating stuff. Maybe because of uh, I don't your do job. online dating at all. I think it's shitty. I hate it. I think it's awful. I mean, I guess it works you for people. I guess it probably works for a lot of people it? that are busy all the time. I don't like it. You tried it though. Uh, I tried it once and it was I didn't like it at all. It was just it's not organic enough for me. I just. Ugh. I don't know. I think everybody puts up like their best picture and their best persona. I don't know. I just rather just meet somebody in person. Plus now I, you know, I, my accounts would get shut down anyway because they're going to think it's a fake, um, a fake Alexis Fox or it's catfishing. And also I don't need to meet people <laughs> online. <laughs> I just don't want anything to do with that. I'm just not, it's just not my jam. I, it's too close to what I do for work. And I don't want like, nah, I'd rather be people in person. Take a chance. Have a real conversation. Leave your house. <laughs> <laughs> Leave your house. Uh, by, by the way, it's very funny. I think it, it happened to me as well. I tried to do online dating and then the, the girls that were connected to me, they said, uh, no, this is like, uh, this is a scam, right? They didn't believe that I, it was the real profile of me because I'm like a YouTuber. So yeah. it, was, it was very funny. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, who is this? Is this going to work out? I mean, yeah. Okay. So you get that part. Like, <laughs> and then you just get people that, um, they're not, I don't want to deal with people that are not going to like me genuinely. You know, that's why I also like, I don't like a, the whole fan thing and dating fans. I'm not into that because I would just want somebody to like me as a genuine person, you know, not because of what I do or start asking me like 30 fucking questions and like, like, a ah, no, if we're out on a date or something like that, I just, let's just have like a normal fun conversation and talk about normal shit and, you know, tell me about who you are as a person. I'm, you know, I'm there because I'm interested. So who are you? Like, what do you like? You know, what's your favorite fucking color? And why? <laughs> like, have you traveled? Do you like to travel? Are you a person that unpacks it? Like, like, do you unpack your luggage right away? Or do you let it sit there for a fucking week? You know, <laughs> those are interesting things. Because let's say like, if you're a person that, in, you know, packs immediately, like unpacks immediately, and, and you get into a relationship with somebody who just like lets their luggage sit around for a week, that might drive you insane. <laughs> it's important to know these details. So, so we have uh, a way that we end this uh, podcast, uh, which is uh, kind of special. Uh, so you are going to, we are going to pretend that you are going uh, to die. And this is the last message. Jesus. <laughs> the, the last message that you have to broadcast to the world. So maybe if, if something happens in 10 years or something like that, we can sit and watch this 30 seconds of you broadcasting the message to the world. What do you want to leave behind? What do you want to say to the world? I don't know, maybe oh, to your Jesus family. Christ, what? Or something like that. Have so, more sex. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So, 30 seconds is yours for you to leave a message to, to the world. Well, give me a moment to think. Jeez, don't lay that on me just immediately. Uh, okay, 30 yes, I seconds? Give, I give dead? you a moment. Literally, to... my last statement. Fucking, okay, it's fine. I'm ready. Just love yourself so much. Just pour it all into yourself and don't, you know, don't be afraid to take risks and. I know I've said that already before, but it's just really if a last dying thing is just know everything's going to be fine and um, live with that energy. Thank you for your time. I love you. <laughs> you love me. <laughs> Thank you.